All right, welcome back everyone. I'm Rajneesh Gupta and this is the series of CompTIA Security Plus exam preparation guide. All right, so before we go ahead, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you keep getting the valuable security content for you. All right, uh, now let's get started with security policy. In this video, we are going to talk about different security policies required for you after you complete your risk management profiles. But before we do that, let's have a quick recap. Let's have a quick recap of our uh, risk management, right? So the way we calculated the risk management was started with uh, understanding our asset. Okay, and then that's where we try to uh, gather information about assets, maybe computer, laptop, servers, everything, right? Then we try to identify the threats including the threat vector on all of our assets. Okay, so it could be DDoS attack, brute force attack, compromised credentials, uh, you know, uh, any kind of attack on web applications as well, spare phishing as well. Then we identify the vulnerability. We try to identify different vulnerabilities that can be exploited by the threat actors, correct? Threat actors are the attackers, right? Then we, try to calculate the impact. Impact is the business impact on the network, which is calculated no normally in the monetary value. Example, uh, if the DDoS attack continues for or realize for two hours, what would be the loss? Maybe $10,000 uh, for two hours, right? So that would be the impact. Next, we calculate the likelihood, right? So, and the likelihood is all about what are the chances? What are the probability this, the, that the uh, the vulnerability will be exploited or the th uh, threat will be realized? So maybe if the attack or the DDoS happen uh, last month or from last five months, you know, regularly every month. So the chances are the DDoS might happen this month as well. So this way the likelihood of the attack is very high, right? And finally, we calculate the risk by the formula impact into likelihood. So the impact into the likelihood become, sorry, the likelihood become our risk. So if our impact on the business, the value, the monetary value is very high and the likelihood of the attack would be realized is also high. So our overall risk will be high as well. It's that clear. It's that, it's, it's that clear uh, uh, about the risk, right? Uh, it, it's all about identifying the different set of, uh, of different levels of impact, different levels of the likelihood as well. Once you identify that, then you come to a conclusion about your risk profile. Now you then decide what is the action you need to take for this risk. If the risk is high, you might want to apply the security solution, security controls to it. And then you also have to apply the security policies. Okay, and that's what we are trying to understand here. Let me erase it. Okay, so then we start with the secure, uh, first security policy. The first kind of security policy is the acceptable use policy. Now this is something which which all talk about do's and don't, what user can do, what not, or what organization uh, users can possibly uh, allow to do. You know, they can allow to access Facebook, social media, or what kind of a post, what kind of a content they can look at, look at the social media while they are in the workplace, or what kind of a content they can publish on the social media as well. Or what kind of email uh, they can send or receive maybe. So, so that to avoid any kind of spell phishing as well. Next, we have the resource access pro policies. This is all about what kind of uh, in-house application or maybe cloud or public-based application, SaaS or PaaS application, the employees should be able to access or the files that should be accessed, maybe shared file or FTP servers files as well. That's where we can also work on the privilege access or access controls too. Next, we have the account policies. Now, this is very interesting because this is where we work on the individual user accounts and their privileges. So that's where a solution like 
AAA, which is the authentication, authorization and accounting kind of solution works in where we make sure the right kind of a user can get access to the right application or right solution at the right time with the right method. So that's all happened uh, by using the account policies. And uh, we also work on the right password standards as well. So we make sure the user follow a certain guideline on creating a new password or generating a new password as well. Maybe it's a 15 characters or maybe alphanumeric and all those stuff, right? Then we have data retention policies. Now this is all about, normally it, it's, it is actually dictated by the regulators as well. Maybe PCI DSS uh, regulatory compliances guy, uh, inform or dictate all the all the all the uh, all the compliant uh, service provider or merchant to have the uh, retention of a logs for maybe six months or three months. So accordingly, they have to follow it. Usually, the large organization tend to have the data retention for six months at least. Okay. They, they may uh, maintain the logs even more than that, but it depends on them. But the minimum data retention period is governed, is being detected, dictated by the regulators most of the time. Okay, and um, then we have the change control policies. Now change control is, uh, it is kind of a RFC request for changes. So every organization have got their own change control policy, which has to be restricted. Just imagine a situation when uh, being an IT engineer or being, being a system admin, if anybody can do changes on any of the devices like firewall or maybe any application, maybe on the servers or anything without any documentation, what would, what would happen if something goes wrong in the next day morning? Uh, you know, nobody knows what went wrong, right? Or nobody knows who did the changes that lead to this problem. So that's where the change control policy is very, very important. In the change control policies, there are a set of fields which is very important. First of all, the, the, the person who is uh, responsible for creating the change should talk to all the stakeholders about, uh, about all the activity that is required. And next he confirmed the downtime, uh, you know, he informed what would be the downtime if we upgrade this firewall, upgrade the router switches or this application or this uh, software or operating system, what would be the maintenance period, maintenance, you know, uh, maintenance time window as well, which is, which would be needed. Then he work on the pre-implementation plan, you know, uh, wherein it makes sure he perform, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, in terms of what kind of uh, testing he has done so far. So that falls under the pre-implementation plan. Then there's a, there has to be a detailed plan. Then the most important is the backout plan, right? So in case if if the user or the system admin is performing some kind of upgrade on hardware, uh, maybe router switches, firewalls, servers, or any system. If that goes wrong, there has to be a backup plan. If there is a, a you know change to create certain policies or routes or uh, peering on any of the routers as well, if that goes wrong, there has to be a backup black backup plan. Okay, so that all falls under the change control policies. There's a specific standards as well, ITIL standards that organization usually follow. And uh, that could be a standard change, emergency change as well. If there's an emergency change, maybe the organization or maybe anybody want to do the changes, uh, you know, today itself or tonight itself, they have to go to the emergency. There's a lot, but uh, for now, this is enough. Um, next, we have next we have uh, asset management policies. Now, this is very, very important because this is where we make sure if we don't know what all we have, you know, think about how can we work on, you know, uh, securing it. So even if you remember, we talked about uh, uh, ways of cal the method of calculating the risk. The first uh, the first step was to uh, identify the assets. So that's where we have to make use of some solutions uh, where we can maintain all our IT inventories, maybe our hardwares, maybe our desktop, laptop, uh, servers, even licenses, even you know operating systems. 
even software, their versions. Uh, in fact, after we identify our software, hardware and everything, we have to assign a risk profile as well. So imagine if we have uh, if we have a server which who is going to carry a very sensitive or mission critical software into it or database that has to that that should be with the highest risk profile or we should maintain as a priority one device in that case. Just to give you an idea how those such kind of a tool might really looks like, um, I'll take you to a sample or a demo tool itself that's from Manage Engine. You can see this is the asset explorer tool. In this, you once you click on the assets, you get to see all the assets that you have in the organization. That includes your router, switches, workstation, laptop, and everything. You can create a new asset yourself. Uh, you know, uh, you can just click on the as create asset. You can specify all the information about the asset from name to subnet mask to information about all the system. Uh, you can add the number of ports that it has, the MAC address. You can even have it into the CSV file and then you can add it. Um, it could be software, it could be asset, uh, you know, asset uh, uh, barcode groups as well. It can even be a software. You see this? Software can also be part of it, con uh, purchases, contract, reports and everything. At the very end, you also understand what is the risk of all your appliances. Now this helps you to understand how many assets you have and then you can work on what assets have what kind of, uh, you know. So let's say you plan for uh, upgrade from Windows to Windows 11 maybe. So in that case, you understand how many assets I have on Windows 7 or Windows 10. If I have uh, maybe 30 or 40 systems still working on Windows 7, I might be having a higher risk and I might have to talk to my, you know, security manager or risk management or CISO in order to perform some uh, upgrade or buying new Windows 11 or Windows 10 machine, All right? So this is how it works. You can even work on uh, getting the reports and sharing with the different stakeholders, right? So this is how you can get the different kind of reports too. All right, so this is all about it. And uh, this is uh, how we create security policies. All right, so if you have any question, you can ask me in the comment. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.